As a candidate, Barack Obama promised he would be a transformative figure who'd move this country forward. But to some, it seems as if America is in retreat. Consider this. The president has proposed reducing our army to the lowest level since before World War II. After pioneering manned spaceflight, American astronauts cannot venture into space or return home without paying Putin's Russia. Here on our own soil, the president's critics fear that America has not seized an important strategic advantage inherent in our own nation's abundant energy resources. And in a move that even former President Clinton has questioned, the administration is preparing to give up control of the Internet to an entity that answers to the, quote, global Internet community. Good evening. I'm Brett Baer. Tonight, Fox News reporting, surrendering America. We start with the Internet. Some say it's the most valuable real estate ever. Is the Obama administration planning to give up our secret password? James Rosen investigates. What you give away with the stroke of the pen, you only get back by the barrel of a gun. That's Bradley Blakeman, former senior advisor to President George W. Bush. And he's referring to the Obama administration's announcement on March 14th that it intends to relinquish oversight of ICANN, the nonprofit corporation that doles out IP addresses and domain names on the World Wide Web. In essence, Blakeman contends the U.S. will be giving up its control of the Internet. You said this is all part of the president's strategy, and I'm quoting now, of appeasement and pandering. That sounds pretty harsh. What do you mean by that? What I believe is that this president, we've seen him in his, in his global speeches, that somehow the United States has, has to be apologetic for our power. The fact is that America is the most free and open uh, country, has made the internet available not just to Americans, but the world. The Commerce Department's long-standing contract with ICANN is set to expire in September 2015. The plan is to have a new body, still undetermined, but global in nature, with multiple so-called stakeholders take over management of ICANN. Supporters, which include businesses such as Verizon, Google, and Cisco Systems, say the shift is long overdue. This is all about uh, you know, separating the Internet from government control. And the United States is in the strongest position to, to argue against government control of the Internet if it relinquishes the last little bit of control that it has. The Obama administration argues that this is necessary because uh, the Internet now exists under the control of one government, and that's dangerous. There's some logic to that, isn't there? I don't trust any other government government, the Chinas of the world, the Russias of the world, to control that which they seek to not have available to even to their own populations. I don't want America subject to others who are not as free and open as we are. The Commerce Department has promised it will not let another government or group of governments assume control of ICANN, but Blakeman has trouble believing this claim. The fact that they're giving others a seat at the table and, and, and diluting America's control tells you everything you need to know. It's only going to get worse. And to Blakeman, there are a lot of ways it can get worse. It's not just people using Facebook and tweeting each other. A lot of our sales are generated through the Internet now. But there's one step further, and that's the payment for getting on the web. We could be subject, if the international community decides to tax the Internet, every American then will be subject for their access to something we paid for. Are there military implications to this shift of control over the Internet, for example, cyber war? Sure. We get tens of thousands, if not millions, of cyber attacks a day to our government and to our private sector. And I have to believe that any relinquish of control even the, the giving out of IP addresses and domain names can be critical to our national security. There's also the prospect here, some see, for political mischief. For example, if a country doesn't like Israel, it can seek to boot the Israelis off of the Internet. Uh, if we're one of many, and we don't have the veto control over others, then we're subject to these bad decisions that are being made by international uh, uh, entities that don't necessarily have America's best interests at heart. Those who favor the transition claim these fears are overblown, that there will be little change in the Internet, and by ceding control, the U.S. will buy some international goodwill, much needed in the wake of Edward Snowden's revelations about America's vast dragnet of intelligence collection overseas. The fact is there's never been a complaint about our stewardship of the Internet in access and control and administration. So this Snowden argument is, is really a straw man argument. The fact is that the United States uh, paid for it. We made it available. 
we should control it because we are much better stewards than uh, the people who are going to have a say in, in the access to the Internet. James Rosen reporting. For the moment, the ball is in ICANN's court as the Los Angeles-based nonprofit is tasked with devising a governing structure for itself that must meet the Commerce Department's approval. Until then, the controversy over Internet control is just rebooting. Let's bring in our panel, syndicated columnist George Will, Democratic strategist Joe Trippi, Kirsten Powers, USA Today columnist and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Charles, what do you think about this? I think the idea that the administration has, that we want to get it out of the control of governments, any government, including obviously ours, which is the one that has control, and it'll be there run by the, quote, international community, is a folly. There is no such thing as the international community. And the idea that it won't be other governments involved is an illusion. Let's say it devolves into the hands of companies. Does anyone imagine that companies in Russia are truly independent and make their own decisions? Or Chinese companies are not going to be answering to the Chinese government? This will bring it under the control of at least adversaries, if not enemies, and that can only lead to mischief for us and for the rest of the world. Here's this is a giveaway that is completely unwarranted. Well, it's been the policy of the United States for a while, the, preceding the Obama administration, that we were going to do this. ICANN is a, a nonprofit. The U.S., in fact, never really even vetoed any of the decisions that they made. They, it was sort of they technically had control over it, but they never really uh, exercised that control. So I, I do, you'd have to ask, you know, if it's not broke, why fix it, right? I mean, if it's, it's working fine, just leave it the way it is. But there is this sense that, um, at least in, among a lot of people in the U.S. government and in the international community, that you want to separate this from government control. And this has been a long-standing move um, that preceded the Obama administration. George? Well, uh, Absolutely. If it's not necessary to change, it's necessary not to change. So what's wrong with the current situation? If we're trying to purchase goodwill, this won't purchase much, and whatever it purchases will be evanescent. I would second what Charles says. The international community is New Zealand and North Korea, Canada and Zimbabwe, Denmark and Syria. I mean, it's non-existent because community suggests shared values. I'm not sure how you control the Internet. I'm sure what the Internet is is the greatest threat to tyranny the world has yet seen, and it ought to be just the way it is now. Joe, you know the Internet better than most you, from the beginning, uh, and your thoughts on this? There is nobody in control of the Internet. It, it used to be when we started out, but now, look, every machine that's connected to it builds the network out in different ways, and this isn't ceding control of the Internet to anybody. ICANN is the literally the phone book issuer of the of the internet it it issues the names and numbers that's what it's it's the I I internet corporation for assigning names and numbers that's all it is it's like turning the phone book over to a private corporation In this case it will be a multi uh, stakeholder corporate entity is what they're trying to make. But to Josh's the, point, if that, if that stakeholder community. is somehow tied to Russia and China, and as Brad Blakeman pointed out, and Russia and China don't even fully let all of their citizens enjoy the Internet, uh, well, isn't that an issue? Well, if, if that's what the Commerce Department agrees to, but that's not what's happening here yet. It's based in Los Angeles, California, ICANN is, and the Commerce Department it's, is going to okay whatever that that movement is but most people who uh, you know who want internet freedom who I've worked with believe this is a really important step uh, to to secure the internet and keep it a free entity in countries like Russia and China and the places that we've been talking about it's not a step to turn it over and and retreat Charles but that is some sort of self-government and when you have it out of the hands of the U.S., you will have the influence of governments. Let's say it's only a phone book, and let's say it decides that all apartheid regimes will now be written out of the phone book and have no addresses, and Israel is kicked off the Internet. Well, I mean, isn't that something we want to prevent? And why would you change a system in which that would not happen? You're just well, not worried about it. 
No, I mean, look, the governments try to do this all, try to stop things happening on the Internet. Turkey tried it last week uh, where Erdogan said he was going to ban Twitter. Uh, it didn't, it exploded the other way. This is, this is bottom-up technology now. It's in the hands of everybody. It doesn't belong to any government anymore. Even if the U.S. government thinks it owns it, it doesn't. And that's just, we see it every day in our lives. We all know that. I so don't want I think Chinese that's hands important. on the phone book. Okay. When we come back, does trimming our fighting forces mean we're no longer in fighting form?